Okay, so if you've read through or watched through our videos, you've seen that we started out with this really simple two table query. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to use the same query to give you some examples of some advanced uh, alias naming that you can use. Now, this is not required. In fact, I strongly recommend that you do it this way, at least at first. Um, but you'll see in some of my examples and later in the answer key that sometimes I, I take some shortcuts. So I want to go ahead and show you those shortcuts so that at least you, you can recognize them and know how to read them. If you're comfortable using them, feel free to, but don't use them until you're comfortable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to shorten some of these things. One of the things that we talked about was that whenever you're using multiple databases, you want to use or multiple tables, you want to use this dotted notation where you say table and then name. So that's not strictly true. You have to do this if they have the same name. OK, so if there were two tables that both had last in them, you would have to use HSCUST so that we'd know the difference between them. But as long as the tables don't have the same names, I mean, the, the fields don't have the same names, you actually don't have to use this information. So when I look at my ERD, I can see that last and first only appear in the HSCUST. They don't appear in HS orders, so no big deal. I can actually take that out. So I can actually say just last and first because it's implicit that those come from HSCUST. All right, let's see what else I can do here. Now that I've lost my ERD. All right, let's take a look at a few others, zoom that back in. Uh, let's see, HS orders, order ID. And remember this is case sensitive. So in HS orders, so there is an order capital ID, but it does not appear anywhere in my HS cust. So I don't have to say that either. I can actually just do order ID. And let's take a look at order date. Oh, look, I minimized it again. I've got to stop doing that. Let's see if I can just find it back here. There we go. Sorry, I've got multiple monitors, but only one screen to show you. So let's see, we were looking at order date. So order date, essentially order date, doesn't show up anywhere over here. So I actually, didn't have to use HS cost orders. Again, I, I recommend you use them, but you don't have to. Down here, same thing. Cust ID is different from Cust ID, so I should be able to say where Cust ID is Cust ID. Order by order ID. Let's see if it works, or if there's something that we have to go back and work on here. And again, if you're wondering how I know these things, we just looked at the ERD, but there's a certain level of playing with things as well that comes in. All right, let's see, it didn't quite work. Huh, look at that. Cust ID clause is ambiguous. And you're probably going to see that word a lot. Um, anytime you've got two tables where SQL can't tell the difference, it's going to tell you when it's ambiguous. So where did it have a hard time telling the difference? Well, if I look up here, I see there's a Cust ID and a Cust ID. And as it turns out, although these are case sensitive, when SQL reads these things, it's not really reading them case sensitive. So to, to SQL in this case, in PHP my admin, cust ID all lowercase looks exactly the same as cust ID with uppercase and lowercase. And therefore it's ambiguous because it doesn't know which table each of these should come from. So in this case, it looks like we actually do have to go back in here and say that my cust ID came from there, and this cust ID came from, come on cursor, 
came from HS orders. And now it shouldn't be ambiguous anymore. There you go. So there's a little bit, little bit of advanced stuff there for you. Now let's take that one step farther. Let's say this was a really long word, like my table was called, this is a really crazy long table and it has a really long name because it's the only way I can remember it. That would be a really long name to have to type every time. So you know what, I can actually give aliases to my tables. To make things easier. Now I'm gonna make them long just because I don't wanna make them confusing. For my grader, let's call this orders. We'll make it small case just to be consistent here. So what am I doing? I'm creating aliases on my tables, just like I create in fields. So what's that mean is gonna happen down here? Oops. Now this can just be orders. And this can be cust. And that'll still work because I'm, oops, customer. Customer. Because I'm still referring to HS cust. I'm just calling it customer. And I'm referring to HS orders. I'm calling it orders. Go. And see, it still works. You can even take that one step further. Don't do this when you turn them in because you'll confuse me. But if you're testing things and you don't want to type so much, you could go so far as to take these all the way down to just one single letter even. Again, if you do them as just one letter, when I have to grade them, I will not be happy. But for your own use, so that you can see, and you can see how much easier it makes that. Now I don't have to type HS sorters, da, 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 da. I can actually put just C and O. Does that make sense? I hope. And again, you could do that up here as well. So, you know, or order date. In fact, if you look at it, it's done it for you in the final code. And this, by the way, is why you can't copy this code and give it to me, because this isn't what I actually typed, is it? So you can see where it explicitly changed and made some differences here. That doesn't look quite like what I wrote, does it? Here, let's bring it out and put it right next to it. I come down here and put that, you can see that this doesn't look exactly like mine did. So we always want to make sure that you're taking this code, copying it, and pasting it. And if your copy and paste gets wonky like mine, well, you may not have any choice but to type it. But there we go. Nice clean code.